welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org, Consequence, and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here and then checking out the series. Please do hit that subscribe button if you're not already. I do uh, three interviews every single week, new and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So it's a great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover some new ones at iTunes and Apple Podcasts, at Spotify and Podchaser, NPR, WFPK.org, YouTube for the video versions, or anywhere you get your podcast from. Subscribe to Kyle Meredith with. That's me, Kyle Mayer. Today, I get to catch up with Paolo Nutini. It's been a handful of years since we spoke. In fact, his last album was eight years ago, and I think that is the last time that we caught up. So the new one is called Last Night in the Bittersweet, and he's going to take us into his process. Uh, we're going to talk about um, him being uncomfortable in the spotlights. Uh, in the moments, he even considered writing for other artists instead of himself. Uh, Paolo's also going to go on to talk about the movies that influenced this latest album, from sampling Quentin Tarantino's True Romance uh, to being inspired by the documentary uh, Jordowski's Dune and the, and the French film Delicatessen as well. All that's and a whole lot more. Let's talk Last Night in the Bittersweet. It's Kyle Meredith with Paolo Nutini. Hey, man. How you doing? Last Night in the Bittersweet is so good. Um, it really is. I, I haven't been able to get enough of this album. So just, just the, you know, the quick congrats here at the beginning. Oh man, thank you, thank you for that. Thank you, I yeah. appreciate it. So, you know, with time, there has been a handful of years in between these two records, and and I, I don't know if that allows for some experimentation or what, but but you know, it, it's it does seem like with every album we get a little bit different version of you, which makes sense, but. But how much yeah. how much comes from finding your own voice for each album? Is that part of the process? Um, I'm I'm not sure. I mean, one the one thing about me with music is there's there's I, I sort of find joy in a lot of different very you know and and a lot of different kinds of music, a lot of different styles of music, and a lot of different aspects of of that music. You know, um, it's not. I've always been the same. So when I write songs, which I tend to, you know, when I'm lucky, I do, you know, every day. <laughs> if the mm -hmm. going's good, and I've got the and 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 I and I sort of forge the time to 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 do it. To do it. Then uh, then yeah, I think the, you know, there's so the the the, the law was all of that different music will always kind of filter through um, and I'm generally creating a lot of the, the the beginnings of that music on my own so you know then that that I, I, I'll collect you know these songs will all come and I'll come from different times and there's songs that you hear on the records that you're talking about there's a song that you you know for instance was on the last record that I put out that, that I wrote that, that I wrote before I, my first records that came mm. out um and sometimes you know sometimes like when you say about finding a voice and things you sort of in fact there's a song that i'm that there's a song that i'm thinking of putting on um you know a body of work that's to come um that actually was 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 written you know in the same at, at that same time oh, wow, so yeah. so prior to my first album coming out and i just and I remember doing that, you know, this song, and I was obviously drawing on the influences of, you know, the soul singers that I loved, or you know, like people like Joe Tex, and and I was writing this song from a perspective of a guy who'd done an awful lot more than I'd done, put it that way, and uh, and it just, you know, I just never, I just never, it never made any sense to me at the time, you know, me being the guy who's singing this song, but. And now I feel that maybe I've got a little bit more of a right to sing that song. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, you know, nineteen years later. So so and with all the experiences that have happened. So yeah, I mean look, the the main thing is that I certainly you know, I, I, I write a lot, I, 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 and I and I'm and I make sure that I've got access to it all, you know, I keep it you know, I, I you know, I keep it at hand and and I mean, a lot of the time it kind of all sticks, it stays in my head. I'd say music must occupy at least 80% of my brain capacity because uh, that would, it would explain a lot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But but yeah, no, there's there's then there's then the whole thing, you know, there's the whole thing about you know, I love to play. I've I've always I've always you know, I've never sort of uh, ever since I started doing this, the tour touring has been a big part of me sort of putting music out. So I've I've all you know, I've always put something out and I've went out and I've and I've tried to tour uh, you know to, to to as many people that want to see it. Uh and and I think there's just a big element of me sort of kind of getting myself ready for that aspect of it, mm. uh, you know, rather than you know would you know rather than just releasing you know whether or not it would have been a good time to release an album. I think sometimes for me that takes me quite a while for for me to kind of form an al- you know form the album as as the way I see it as being an album. I, 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 I don't really see it as just being X amount of songs. I feel like, um, and it might not sound, it might not sound that spontaneous. And and uh, but I mean, you know, the recordings of the music, the record, the songs within themselves, you try to sort of capture what comes out, you know, as organically as possible. But when it comes to, you know, making a record and making an album, um, something happens, and you're like, okay, and then and, then, and I guess. You just hope that, that you manage to piece the last kind of elements together, and luckily this time it did. And and you know, frankly, it wasn't it, it wasn't something that that whole aspect of the touring and the public aspect of it, and just really being out there for people to consider and to sort of you know that kind of uh, vulnerability and that kind of exposure was something that I wasn't that I'd grown sort of uncomfortable with mm. and that I wasn't keen to nurture that. And, and yeah, um, and, and, and a lot changed, you know, with the kind of dramatic isolation that came with the last, um, that came through that whole pandemic time. Um, I sort of, my perspective completely changed on how, you know, that, that kind of, that gift or that opportunity to take a meeting with such, you know, on such a wide scale with so many people, and that sort of uh, connection was really—I don't know—I I started to sort of view it in a completely different way. I never, uh, and and I and I really wanted to, I wanted to try and make that again, try and do that again. So 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 yeah, so yeah, there's you know there's there's time. I you know I do my thing in between the the. Uh, at one point, you know, I was saying I was going to write songs, and you know, maybe people might want to record those songs. And there's a there's a there's an idea about that that's quite appealing, I think, and a kind of consistency, and a and a and like I said, you know, you're not there, you're not in the front, you're not even necessarily singing the songs. Um, but I would meet with I would meet with the publisher and um, you know people involved in my sort of and my thing, and and I'd play them the songs, and they'd say, "Oh, wow, well, okay, this one," and they're coming, you know, they're seeing these names, these really appealing names. Um, for we could give this song to them. I think they'd like this song. They're looking for a song, okay. Um, and 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 then each of those songs, I was kind of like, I would say, actually, I think I kind of want to keep that from that one <laughs> just now. And and uh, and and. Uh, and all of the ones they deemed to be the best of the bunch were w- would be the same. <laughs> so eventually they were like, it sounds to me like you know you want to make a you 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 want to keep recording music you know by yourself and and yeah and and, and they were you know fundamentally right you know it's 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 a big part of a uh, big part of who I am. It's a big there's a big there's a big. Uh, a big part of it is me being able to express myself properly that comes through music and it can it always has I've, I've, uh, yeah it always has and that's why I think I've always loved it so much and we'll be right back right after this welcome back it's Kyle Meredith with Paolo Nutini hearing you talk about it's sort of that's that um I don't want to call it an argument with yourself but that push and pull you know how public versus, you know, how private and, and, and what you put out in the song, you know, I, I'll kind of jump around here because you take after Neath, And of course, lots of people have mentioned there you are sampling true romance. And I, I hear you talk about how, oh, yeah. you know, using that as a tool. I mean, that's a great, not just sampling, but 
but but movies and characters and writing about them instead of yourself i feel like that's got to be a great tool for a songwriter you know when you don't want to put yourself out there too much you know you have the um the, the the lyrics in stranded words have i shown you enough of me and i thought man that's a really strong line right there especially you know i might be taking it out of context of course but in the context that we're talking about right here is it you know how much of myself do i want to give up um how much how much well, of that tool do you yeah. lean on yeah well well i mean i think you know when, when it comes to the relationships that you're in with people and and you, there comes a point where you're uh, for me, I always, uh, I'm, all, you know, I always, I'm, I'm at, you know, that that line in the song, I've shown you enough of me, you know, yourself can be so hard to be. Is, uh, yeah, you just sort of want to make sure you're actually giving the person the the the, the, your, the honest perspective of yourself. You know, it can it can be it can be easy to pretend a lot, you know, mm-hmm. to pretend and to try and you can so you can start to forget yourself who you are. <laughs> you know, um, that was again like the those you know the the, the I would I would have a habit of uh, of being able to distract myself from myself <laughs> an awful lot um, by going you know because you know I would take trips and 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 distract myself with things that were really you know really amazing scenarios and places and and when you when I wasn't able to do that I just had to kind of really kind of come to grips with. Who I was who, with the person I'm kind of living in the body of. You know? sure. It's uh, it's it was it was yeah. But but like you said, there's a lot of uh, a lot of what I'm writing about as well as 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 stories that I you know there's a lot of a lot of stuff I write about day to day is is inspired by books that I read or films that I watch, um, uh, songs that I listen to, and people you know, people's stuff that, that's going on, I tend to sort of need to have drawn a, a bit of a parity and sort of something that I feel like I identify with and then maybe, maybe, okay, maybe maybe what I'm, maybe that movie puts it in a really extreme way or, but, um, but yeah, yeah, it was, it was, um, we, it's obviously something that we've, we've, we've we, we, we did, we did quite a bit in the last record as well with the sampling and it's a, uh, it's, I think it's just a, again, it's just a nice way to sort of um, express how you feel, and and uh, that movie for me was was just it, to this day is one of the most amazing love stories ever. It's just uh, it's, it's brutal, but you know it, it can be. <laughs> it's uh, I, sometimes you just want to sort of you know show a little bit of who you are and what you like as well, you know. And we were lucky to be able to 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 do it, you know. We were lucky to to be you know to have been given a permission to to use um, the words and Patricia Kitt's voice, and because you know that's a big part of it, the way she delivers those words, and and uh, it's just yeah. I'm just I was so happy when we got the, the you know the positive reaction. <laughs> okay. And Tarantino gets a writing credit on it, which is, you know, fun to see in the liner notes on top of all that. He, 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 he sure does. He sure does. <laughs> I'll playfully ask, you know, just sort of taking the bait from something you said a minute ago. Are there other, you know, so we've got True Romance there. Are there other specific movies that are on this album? Not sampled, obviously, but are there other songs that are, uh, you know, as specific as as Afterneath is in that way? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, let me. Let me think. Let me think. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say so. I remember. Uh, I remember watching, and I don't know why, because this is like a, a a weird association, perhaps. But uh, I was watching a, a documentary, and it's called uh, Jodorowsky's June. Have you ever watched that? I haven't. No. Um. It's. 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 It's about it's one of these amazing documentaries. In fact, it's one of the only documentaries I know that has its own soundtrack. Mm. The documentary has a soundtrack that you can buy the vinyl, <laughs> and it's amazing. And it's about Alejandro, Alejandro uh, Jodorowsky, who, you know, epic filmmaker, films like Holy Mountain, mm. um, El Topo. And he, and you know, the, the book, June, that was recently remade, 
and they, they obviously they, so so he was going to make the movie and uh, and it's it's unbelievable. It's got like you know Pink Floyd were going to do the soundtrack. So was the band Magma. He had H.R. Geiger working on it. He was like Orson Welles was going to be in it. Jagger was going to be in it. Um, Salvador Dali was going to be in it. And it never got made because, well, you know, it was a it was a it was a super uh, ambitious project, but it was it was in the you know it was on the way. It wasn't just an idea; it had it, it, it had fully begun the undertaking. And um, and yeah, I, I was just watching that, and you know, these some some people some things put you in a in like a little headspace, and and then I just. That you know started to write the song that's on there called "Take Me, Take Mine," and I think it, it was like just it just put me in this uh, in this sort of like empty planet with this you know a specific person in my life, and and I was and it was the idea of us sort of you know just being there, the two of us alone, and have and complete kind of gay abandon. <laughs> um, and 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 sort of trying to get out the other side, and that's what all everything that went on there. And 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 I mean, that's that's not really, you know, that, that there's no reason why I should take that from the, the documentary or the film or, or the story. Or, but it just, yeah, sometimes it's just like you hear a noise. Sometimes it could be like the. Uh, like, you know, it's, it's the sound of a synthesizer or something, and it just completely puts you in a headspace, and all of a sudden, it's enough. It's mm-hmm. enough to help you detach enough to, to to slip into somewhere that you can create something, you know, and uh, and just let it just stimulates the imagination, and the, and, and 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 all of a sudden, you're you're away, mm-hmm. and the. Uh, I I'm constantly writing songs that are inspired by movies and the the atmosphere of those movies. I don't know if you know a French film called Delicatessen. I think it came out in the nineties. It's uh, Jean Pierre Jeunet. Jeunet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's a post I don't know post apocalyptic comedy thing set in a in an apartment building and um, and there's a lot of the music in there, the piano. It's constantly when I sit down at the piano, I'll start playing little bits from that song, and that'll be that, you know, from that movie, and that'll be my sort of segue into what I'm going to sit and try and write at that piano. Pretty much, it's pretty much, pretty much exclusively that, or you know, something like, you know, depending on my mood, I don't know, maybe like the you know, Keith Jarrett Cologne concert, I'll, which I can't play. <laughs> Any, I can play a little tiny. Bit. Like I can play a real rudimentary version of small segments of that um, of that concert, but uh, but again, just the I guess it's just that it's, it's pure atmosphere. It's just pure atmospheric. It's pure uh, immediately these things immediately without without even having to think, just take me just take me away, and you know that can be half the battle. I think sometimes just finding the uh, finding the way of of the Finding the route to the escape and all, just to just you know, with what's going on in life, sometimes just finding your way through the door. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and yeah, I find that an, an awful lot. That's I mean, there's a lot of an awful lot of I find books and I find movies, but I find movies to be or, or television programs to be a, to be a really uh, vivid and um, immediate way of that kind of transportation. And I think oh. that's the whole point of them, right? And <laughs> That's the whole bloody point. Sure. And we'll be right back right after this. Welcome back. It's Kyle Meredith with Paolo Nutini. You know, I, I again, I love how all this has been filtered through you, how it's come out in these songs, because these songs have meant a lot to people very quickly and to myself included. And even getting to the ending, uh, you know, with, with uh, closing with Ryder, and and that line, I promise that I'll never change hell. I tell you I will, but I'll stay the same is also one of my favorite lyrics of the year. And 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 beautifully wrapping up this record. So good luck. Thank you. And good night. You like, I don't know why more people don't take advantage of that right there, but you did it. And uh, all compliments to you again. Uh what a perfect record this is. Yeah, that's a that's a it's a pretty 
you know, listening to the song back or performing it since writing it, it really sort of, I think that very much sums up what I was talking about, about that, um, that kind of long look in the mirror. Um, and you know that 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 I was that I was uh, presented with during that time, but you know again, it's a positive, you know, positive ending. I think, <laughs> even though I'm quite a quite a stark look inside, maybe not finding a lot of good, but there's um, you know, just that whole process was 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 a good thing to do. <laughs> Here I'm talking to you, and and sitting in I'm sitting in Colorado, uh, waiting to play a show tomorrow. So I'm, you know, I feel like feel like things are working out. <laughs> <laughs> things are working out. Um, Paolo, thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, for you know bringing these well, songs man, to us. Thank you, and 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 you know if we. If in the future you ever want to talk again and, th- and just thanks for the support and for listening to the music and if you want to talk again we can talk longer then let me know we'll, 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 we'll organize it it's been an Absolutely. absolute pleasure man yeah same here always always a pleasure i appreciate it no, it's tough. thank you and my thanks to Paolo Nutini. The new album is called Last Night in the Bittersweet. Thanks to you for checking out the episode in the series. Hit that subscribe button before you get out of here. Again, three brand new interviews every single week. New and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at iTunes and Apple Podcasts. At Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, WFPK.org, YouTube for the video versions, or anywhere you get your podcasts from. Subscribe to Kyle Meredith with. Then after that, head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social medias, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all three of them. My address is at Kyle Meredith. So I do hope you like and follow along. And that does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network. Sorry about having, you know, um, changed the time. It's easy to hear your favorite artist on WFPK from wherever you are. Listen on your smart speaker, live stream from our website at WFPK.org from Louisville Public Media. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you for uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.